So it's a tough act to follow Kaushik. Thank you, Kaushik. There was, sorry, little center. Okay. Gotta pin it on the little droid man there. So. Uh, tough act to follow, but. I'm going to take a few minutes, and I just wanted to get feedback from people really quickly as we start to plan DroidCon next year. And uh, we're trying to incorporate a lot of your feedback from last year into this year's DroidCon. And um, wanted to get some feedback on just what you felt we did well this year, and potential areas that you, sort of things that you'd like to see us do a little more of, things that you'd like to see us do a little less of, and any other sort of general items you have. Um, so I've got the sheet up here, which hopefully you guys can all see. And um, just sort of, you know, three, four buckets. Um, so uh, I'm, the, I'm the chair of the program committee working closely with, you know, Amrit, Kingsley, and uh, Soham. So I'm mostly looking for feedback with respect to content. And, but, you know, I'm happy to capture feedback with respect to logistics and infrastructure, which I can pass on to the HasGeek team as well. Um, now, we did send out a feedback form. So I know there's a lot of feedback we're con is sort of collecting anonymously. But I also want to just open it out so in case there's sort of broad feedback that you've got, maybe not specific around, you know, like here's how uh, Amrit's session was or anything like that, but just broad feedback about some things that we've done well that you'd like to see a little more of, some things that you'd like to see a little less of, since this will help us to sort of plan out next year a little more. So uh, I think there's a couple of mics, so one of the volunteers can just help. Just raise your hand if you'd like to chime in and, you know, he'll help you out. So. Anybody? I see a couple of hands up there, so we're new. Yeah, so um, I have, uh, I noticed that we used those three Androids for rating sessions in terms of beginner, intermediate, and advanced. Yeah. I think uh, those were uh, somewhere inappropriate because mm -hmm. I attended and watched a lot of intermediate sessions that, in my opinion, should have been marked beginner mm -hmm. and a lot of, you know, advanced sessions that should have been intermediate. Mm -hmm. So I guess uh, next year, we, one of the things that we could do wa would be to ensure that a beginner session means somebody who's been probably, say, writing Android stuff for six months, and an intermediate session means a significantly intermediate session. I mean, I don't want to, I personally would not want to see how to build layouts or, you know, things like that in an intermediate session, because that is something that is, that would be more appropriate for somebody who's basic. And advanced sessions would mean something that would specifically require me to rack my brains. Yeah. And, you know, that's something that you rarely get to see. Yeah. So that was something that I... No, that's good feedback. No, I think it's something we sort of struggle with, right? I mean, it's... Uh, uh, some speakers almost sort of prefer to put it down as being like a beginner session so they can reach a larger audience, even though some content's intermediate. Um, and sort of speaker's self-assessment of whether the content is beginner, intermediate, or advanced is sometimes off. And sometimes the thing is, even though we review some of the slides with people, it's sometimes hard to sort of get to that level of detail from the committee standpoint to look into it. Completely agree. I think it's something where maybe, I don't know what you think, maybe we can put out some guidelines on what beginner, intermediate, advanced is. Would that be a good idea? Sure. Hey, hi. Uh, I'm pretty much new to Android development. Uh, only for the last two weeks I'm into Android development. Even I myself found the contents to be actually of too uh, low in technical level. Mm -hmm. So it would be better if, better if you could add more in detail. In detail. Like that's, that's good feedback. I definitely welcome you next year to come forward and present. I'm sure you'd be a capable speaker by then as well. Yeah. Thanks. And also I felt that there were a lot of uh, cross-platform talks here. Uh, maybe more Android-related talks, you know, mm -hmm. more Android details than you know, writing in cross-platform apps and deploying just to Android. Mm -hmm. I think we had, out of a total of uh, 38 sessions, we had four cross-platform talks. Uh, I, I agree, it's 10%, but cross-platform is important enough that it was a big theme this year. Okay. But and we had only about four or five. We had uh, James, we had Gaurav, uh, and then we had two more. Uh, so uh, Some of the talks which really didn't talk about the cross-platform, but, you know, sessions were more or less related to that. Uh, related to that. Okay, I see. Yeah. yeah. That's good feedback. I, but, you know, I guess I must state that this year one of the themes was cross-platform. Since increasingly that has been sort of in demand from people. Because uh, people are building apps across iOS and Android increasingly. And it uh, looks like potentially Windows as well will maybe a theme next year. 
but it's good feedback. Um, what do you think that mix should be then? You think it's if so? If it's not this year, we had four out of forty. Ah, got it. So got it. Okay. Got it. Got it. Okay. Fair enough. That makes sense. I, I suspect our theme here will continue to be to have some mix of both, because that is sort of the interest of the population. What that mix is, I'm sure you know we're open to feedback. So. But but welcome, good, good, you know, good feedback there. So I think you know, if nothing else, let's think about. Uh, what mix of your native, right? That's sort of what you're saying. So, okay. anything else? I see a few hands. Could some mics go around, please? Hey, this is Raja. Uh, where are you, Raja? Here, here. here, here. Excuse ah, me. Go. Here, here, here. here. Oh, it's okay. Thanks. So, pretty much overall, it's a good session. Okay, Great. we are Thank really uh, felt happy, more or less, that Intel TI sessions, and of course, there are other lot of companies they have presented. It's sure. pretty much it's a uh, very good. So, wha uh, can what I ask I you what do you think we did well? Because I'd like to capture those two. Because we no, want. I don't want to specifically tell you any. No problem. No problem. I don't sure. want that into that. That's cool. So, but what I overall observed is mostly we have covered app side. Android app side. Yeah. So it's a, what uh, we thought over here is okay. Maybe probably we will cover end to end of at least application processor point of view. Maybe we should cover little, little bit of middleware side, multimedia side, mm -hmm. and even if somebody because all whoever came over here, it's mostly from the product OEM companies, right? So they can still some more point Linux kernel point of view, even multimedia side, connectivity side, mm -hmm. something. What all the challenges they faced? when they integrate mm -hmm. all the connectivity, like mm -hmm. Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, mm -hmm. like GPS, AGPS, some, one of the discussion they talked about GPS, but still, little more, okay, mm -hmm. because even that, how the integration, because mm -hmm. app, how integrated with baseband processing, if somebody comes of that kind of things, mm -hmm. it will give us, okay, more challenges, what all the, because Android is almost there in the industry more than four years now. So okay. the app side, the basic, and even today, that evening session, we talked about GCM, it's a new topic. So if mm. we cover such a new ideas, new topic, which further down the two years down the line, this will pick up some, some more ideas rather than talking about till this Android app side, mm. not much makes sense such a mm -hmm. forum. This is just a my feeling. Got Maybe it. I Got it. So you feel that more systems oriented talks, which cover various systems oriented uh, areas, would be benefit. So this year, we clearly had two themes, one around cross-platform, one around app demos, show and tell. But these two didn't let us get into some areas of system-related topics which could have been of interest. That's good feedback. I think we'll... Um, we yes, we had a lot more system talks, talks last year. So there's sort of a bit of a shift that way. <laughs> um, and one thing I want to highlight too is, you know, some of this is driven by the funnel and the speakers who come forward to talk and the proposals that came out. We did sort of select the themes this year, sort of saying, you know, we're looking at app demos and cross-platform. Um, but, you know, we welcome topics in all sessions, and, um, uh, but it's good feedback. I think, you know, we'll definitely keep it in mind too for next year, so. Mm -hmm. We are covering all the layers, so yeah. that uh, actually uh, who comes, if he is experienced or he has some ideas, he will get more knowledge and who doesn't have, they'll get one exposure. Yeah. Otherwise, we are actually staying at the layer where uh, apps and somebody has already done it. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. it's something like marketing. So, we stop mm -hmm. there. So yeah. We need to actually go forward and as Raja said that we need to think of two years down the line what exactly or even the latest uh, uh, the OS which has come up, how exactly, how easy it is to implement or or one session should be on workshop kind of thing that, okay, if you are interested in this topic, do on this, but there is a workshop uh, working on so that you can go and try hands on yeah. getting a device and all that. Yeah. that can I get both your names, please? My name is Deepak. Deepak and Raja. Raja. Uh, I need a favor. Can I request that both of you come forward with more systems related topics next year as speakers? Yeah, done. Awesome. That'll be great. Um, I think that's something we didn't get enough submissions this year, but those would definitely have been in consideration if they had. And the other part of it too is the system related topics. Um, for instance, Shri Kumar came forward with one, and I think there was one session with that, but there weren't enough upvotes in the other topics. So definitely your votes in the community matter. So definitely next year as a part of the cycle, please vote uh, for talks that you're interested in. 
if you look at them, a lot of the app demos, they had like 30 plus votes in the final. And a lot of the other talks were like four, five, six, seven. So um, unfortunately, we have to go by this since this is the guidance we go by, right? So uh, please definitely look out for that, but good feedback. So thank you. Hey. Uh, yeah. Uh, Hi. Uh, compared to last year, this year's uh, website seems, you know, more colorful or something. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to uh, add, even though this was a problem that last year also, was that you, know, you don't get the slides. So the currently, you have a link, you have a nice layout showing all the topics, so in one page. Uh, even if it's last year's uh, website now, I won't get the slides. So you know, I'm sitting here, I couldn't go to the museum. Now I want to see what are the final slides they've used. Right now, it is pointing to the funnel link, right? That has only the outline slide. So I guess it will be really good if you can in one page, an I can go to any uh, talk slide. If I can get a link to that, that will be awesome, I guess. Uh, just turn this over to Kiran from Hasgeek. I think he can sort of talk through the site and the funnel and how to access that. Yeah, so the funnel does have slides as one of the fields that we ask speakers to fill in. And uh, after every event, we ask speakers to go back and put the slides into the funnel. Um, most of them don't end up doing that, and that's unfortunate, but that's, uh, that's beyond our control. Uh, it's up to speakers to do that, so speakers in the room, please do that. Please go back to funnel, edit your entry, and add your slides over there. Okay? Um, even if you're using ImpressJS, put it online and put a link over there. If it can be embedded, it'll be embedded, otherwise just the link will be there. Okay? We do that every event. Uh, yeah, in addition to doing that, quite honestly, we badger most of the speakers for the last couple of weeks before the conference saying, please send us your slides, please send us your slides. And a couple of people here are probably, are probably begging for the last few weeks saying, hey, look, let's look at your slides. We might have some feedback. So uh, we definitely do that. Uh, I think we could probably do more of it. We could probably even sort of decline certain speakers who don't have their slides ready, but that's a little harsh, right? So it's a bit of a trade-off. So what eventually happens is you know some guys are good, they're probably busy juggling a number of things, you want them to present, we kind of go a little easy on them, they don't have the slides uploaded in time, they pull it through in time for the conference and they make a great presentation here. So it's a bit of that trade-off, so a few of them don't make it in time on them. But we'll definitely send reminder notes out and hopefully they'll all put it out there. So, so those of you who are speakers here, here's a request from everyone here, they want to see your slides. Uh, many of you have shared it on Twitter. But if you can upload it to the funnel with a link to your slides and slide share or wherever it is, I'm sure it will help everyone else later who would want to come back and check and see the slides or have access to the materials. So, uh, uh, so basically, uh, the more than feedback, first of all, I want to tell that I'm not an Android developer. Uh, I haven't developed in quite a while, like in two, three years. And I've never developed on an SDK, but I never felt out of place. So there has to be a huge round of applause for all the community members who have really worked hard. And so it's not one of those geeky event wherein you know you start feeling out of place and I have landed up somewhere wrong or something of that sort. So that's not there. Uh, one of the thing I wanted to uh, extend App Jam that we did maybe. Uh, so what exactly can happen more than gratification is people want to make their idea live rather than getting gifted for that. So what you can do is like reduce the five minute into two and everybody should come up with a Twitter hashtag. So what happens is like for example I go to the stage and I deliver my idea. Some of the developers are interested to work with me, but it dies down. So basically I come up and I have a hashtag in mind. So whoever wants to contribute, just tweet to me and then, you know, we all can get together because there are lots of developers who can't develop everything alone. Development is not about you sit down and code everything yourself. It's about collaborative efforts. So Twitter is there and virtually everybody in this room, I think is on Twitter or if you're not, I mean, you should. So, <laughs> but uh, it's a very easy way to, so basically instead of five, you go to two minutes. You go there, you present your idea, come down. If somebody wants to really like and work with you, they can tweet on that hashtag and maybe if it's a good idea, you can have developers and you can really make it live. So more than any reward, the idea of becoming live is much more rewarding. Mm -hmm. So uh, I have a complaint regarding the, the mobile projector. So it was not working as it required. So in an Android conference, you have to have a mobile projector which can project the mobile better so that people who want to give a live demo uh, can do it in proper way. Uh, point. Yeah, valid point. So just add that in logistics. Yeah, hi. 
Um, I've been attending DroidCon over the past, uh, even the last year I attended and I should uh, applaud you guys that the, the content in the sessions has grown so well over the last year that it uh, was really nice attending it more than it was last time. Yeah. So I think that's very nice. I want to applaud you guys on that. Yeah. Um, but I think one thing that needs to come in is this uh, kind of more geek kind of sessions. I feel at least if you could have a stream of things that are going just, you know, into it. So, you know, the NDK and all that stuff, they announced one more something over the IO. I forgot the name of it. But I think we need to have more um, Probably not as mainstream sessions, but probably pods as such or something like that, wherein people can just go and get started or, you know, share their ideas with someone who's already in the pod or, or something like that. Mm -hmm. More on the collaborative with one another developer mm. rather than just give sessions. Yeah, okay. no, completely agree, right? And so this is the sort of thing we really want to encourage. What we sort of struggle with though, right, is some of these conversations need to happen, right? Now, and if you remember my first presentation when I sort of kicked off this year's DroidCon, I was really hoping people would attend less of these sessions and find people with similar interests and collaborate on some of these things, right? So the hard part is ultimately when you go through the funnel, right, some of these topics are not going to get that many votes. They might be four people, five people. But it's this thing of when you're at this conference, can you find each other? And this is a huge, beautiful place, right? I mean, there's enough space around here, additional rooms, lounges, and so on. But what can we do to help more of you sort of come together while you're here? There are people from all over the country, right, who have come together from Delhi and so on to help UX guys come together. People who are systems come together to have some of the separate conversations. You can whiteboard separately in a room, you know, just do different things together. We'd love to do that. And it doesn't need to be a session necessarily, sort of what you're saying. Completely agree. Uh, we want some ideas for how we can do it. And of course, you have to figure out whether you can manage the logistics of it too and so on. But we definitely want some ideas there. Sounds like you've got an uh, idea. Can you just right. add? If, I mean, no, just one ah, minute. I just want to add. Um, actually, um, if we can get in touch with you regarding that, I yeah. think we would like to help because we had a couple of ideas this time, but then we kind of had, you know, who, who to talk to and stuff like that. Yeah, so th sure that thing. was a little. Uh, DroidCon related, absolutely to me. I mean, any other ideas with respect to how it is organized, logistics too, we can capture it here and take yeah, it offline. Sure. Kiran or me, either way, it's That would be cool. Sure. Thanks. Hi. Just speaking I of collaboration, I had a couple yeah. of ideas to share. Uh, you know, I found it extremely challenging to, you know, uh, interact with people within the audience because I don't know who they are, what their background is, where they're from, what are they here for. Yeah. And the irony is, I'm not even an engineer, but everyone I spoke to, and I mean 10 out of 10 people that I must have spoken to out of this entire audience, said their primary goal of attending this event, other than getting domain knowledge, which people here seem to have already figured out most of the things, was to actually meet others. Mm -hmm. But there is no format available in mm. which I'm literally, I, I, you know, it's like just approaching someone very randomly and striking up a conversation. Now, mm -hmm. it might not be suitable to everyone's personality or right. inclination. Mm. So, a couple of suggestions I can make for yeah. that. Uh, in the past, I've, I've attended similar such conferences here and in, uh, in Silicon Valley in California. Uh, one was like literally a board here, like a startup hub. For example, I had attended an event which had a board with post-it, like stickies, and startup hub which said looking for jobs, people, funding. Something as simple as that. And it kind of required anyone and everyone to just put a little note with their contact information mm. at the event, stick it there. Got it. Everyone can go there, look it up and say, okay, you're looking for a job or a person or funding and whatever the topics might be, and you can reach out to them. That was something which I found extremely valuable because it was at the event. That means everyone who's posting is necessarily at the event. And the other suggestion I had was another event which I had attended. Uh, for all those attending, like folks like myself, uh, when we register or sign up for the event and we get our confirmations, uh, on the web, there was an option to actually share your own information and know who, who's attending, what they're all about, what's their purpose. So through the web itself, and this was overseas, so it kind of allowed people to schedule something that I'm going to be attending this event on this day in this city. This is who I am. I've seen your background. I would love to connect with you when you're there, and we can maybe find a few minutes to chat in a corner. I thought that really elevated the entire experience of the event because mm. not all topics are relevant to everyone, mm -hmm. but what is definitely relevant to everyone is I need to know who's sitting next to me. Mm. And now I've lost out my time because people have either left or maybe the topics don't interest mm -hmm. them and the event's mm -hmm. over. Thank you.
Uh, hey. Um, I just had a point to make. Hi. Uh, hi. Uh, firstly, it was very good because my first time attending DroidCon, and I'm not a Android developer, but I love things that have been that people spoke about and how they, you know, join different platforms. Uh, the only thing uh, that was a little problem, I think, even for the speakers, was the 30-minute time frame that you guys have for each session because <laughs> most of them wanted to show pieces of code that are very important for people who would want to use if not the same thing at least the way that they have done it mm -hmm. and they skipped over that and also the uh, demos that they were supposed to give mm -hmm. and another situation was where there are two interesting topics that are on, uh, on the same time you would until and unless I attend a session or know the person I wouldn't know what to attend and what not to. Mm -hmm. It's a different thing to go back and have a look at the videos but it's a totally different experience to sit there and actually see someone presented. Yeah. So my suggestion would be firstly I think if people are really interested you, you can spread it over to three days and just not two so that this we have time with speakers to actually ask them questions and they can present their ideas completely because I think they've taken a lot of time to put in the effort to the slides and the you know the demos and the code that they have written probably just for this event so that they can share along with the other people so I really think we need to respect them for what they are doing as well mm -hmm. because today the events I attended most of them didn't have time they just went through the whole thing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I next yeah. DroidCon I would probably want to see that yeah so so sort of two points in the feedback the second one I'll let sort of Kiran chime in a bit on so the first one was sort of around the 30 minute thing right so this is a tough one, right? Um, we have had some speakers over the last two days who have actually finished in 10 minutes, 15 minutes, even though they had 30. And initially, they might have been allocated 45. So um, ultimately, different speakers take different amounts of time. And ultimately, sort of the combination of the stage and everything else causes some people to talk a little faster. It's a little hard to gauge. And there's some speakers who, until last night, weren't even sure they needed the whole half hour. So uh, it's a bit of a mixed bad. It is hard. Um, uh, I'll, sorry, I'll just yeah, quickly no, finish the screen. Several of the sessions were just 15 minutes. Sorry? Several of the sessions were just 15 minutes. If Absolutely. You several of the sessions were just 15 minutes. Yeah. So we did have a few speakers who took the whole half hour. Completely agree. Now, what we had sort of spoken to them about is if they had enough content for a full half hour, to consider splitting it into two half hour sessions and take a full one hour. So we had four or five of those as well. As you know, we had James's session, which is a full one hour and really engaging, sort of a philosophical talk about design and how to build components, which hopefully was an inspiration for a lot of people here thinking of designing and building platforms and frameworks, contributing to open source and so on. Uh, Soham did a workshop for about an hour. So we ensured those happened as well. Um, we really believe that half an hour is the right spot. It sort of pushes people to try to just get the key concepts in and then open it up to questions, share insights. Because ultimately, it's not a training session, right? 30 minutes. You can't go through a whole thing in code. If you're trying to do a workshop, that's a different thing. And workshops can be one hour, no problem. So I, think, I don't think that's going to change. I think we'll probably stick to a half hour. Our feeling and overall feedback is it actually worked well. So. Uh, with respect to two days versus three days, Kiran, you want to chime in? That's sure. So the, the main thing that comes up with that is the cost. Okay. Um, to give you a sense, um, what is your average monthly electricity bill? It's w what's your monthly electricity bill on average? Um, for some people, it's 200, goes all the way up to 1,000, depending on the size of the house you live in. Now, take a guess at what the electricity bill for this venue is for one day. Uh, I signed the bill yesterday, so I know what it is. It's 24,000 rupees per day. That's how much electricity we're consuming on a per day basis. And uh, you add one more day, that's that much more cost. Now, that's actually the trivial part of the cost. The overall cost of the venue comes out to about 1.6 lakhs per day. Okay? Um, and who's paying for it? You are. It's your ticket money that's paying for this venue. So basically, to make it three days will just mean that your ticket gets that much more expensive, which means fewer people are willing to pay that. Okay? And that is the trade-off. You know, you have to optimize for how much will someone be willing to pay versus at what level do you say that I'm sorry but you can't attend two parallel tracks or you can't attend three parallel tracks or can we make it four so that we don't have to take a venue for that many more days. And uh, that optimization changes over time. You know, If it turns out that uh, the general attendee at an event is willing to pay a little more, then you can say, okay, let's bump up the quality a little more. Okay? And uh, that trade-off is unfortunately not based on what 
any one of us as an individual is willing to spend on, but rather about what the larger audience is willing to spend on. And that's a very difficult guess to make because it's also a guess that I need to make one year in advance. So right now we're making the bet that next year's DroidCon is going to be three days. Okay? Uh, I may be wrong. It could have been a four-day event. I don't know, but I'll only find out next year because I need to make that bet right now when I go book the venue. Okay? And that, that is an unfortunate problem. You know? So it's, uh, uh, it's not an easy problem to solve. Yeah, and combined with that, this thing of how do you align all these tracks together so it makes sense for people whose experiences and interests are so diverse, right? We've got three tracks, a couple of rooms to play with, and people whose uh, interests are beginner, intermediate, advanced, across everything from UX to systems to apps, uh, doing specialized topics, Arduino, there's a whole wide range. And, you know, I've got my day job, I volunteer for the session when uh, just this week, there's two nights and I was up pretty much all night but trying to work the schedule or work through to confirm speakers, follow up with them. Uh, I think a couple of days uh, before, I tried to drop the final schedule and I was up all night and it was a real struggle because we had to orient some tracks together and ultimately you have to balance some things. So a couple of variables we try to balance, right? One is we don't want people to keep hustling from one room to another. <laughs> so we try to keep you in one room as much as possible. So that's why we sort of had the HTMLFI cross-platform track, and then we had some tracks around app demos, um, and then we had some systems-related talks that were in the other room there, so the smaller focus group could take those up. Now, uh, when you mix those, right, among these, you've still got a few speakers who are very good, some who are a little newer. So then you've sort of got to align and say, okay, what, do we have two popular speakers out there at the same time? then how do you kind of juggle those around? Once you've done that, you've got to figure out, okay, you've got a bunch of outstation speakers this year, this guy gets in at 11, but his flight comes in at 9, he might be a little late, I've got to move him to day two. <laughs> so there's a whole bunch of those little moving pieces that add to it, and then people's plans change, as you know. <laughs> so uh, it, I'm just sort of saying, uh, I'm not saying we can't improve there, uh, I'm just saying it's, it, it's just been a hard problem. Uh, we'll definitely hope to do better. Uh, your feedback is valuable, completely agree. Just want to share with you just um, some of the complexity behind it, really. So, <laughs> uh, Who else? Uh, I think you've been raising your hand for a bit, so why don't I let you... Oh, Hi. sorry. Yes, please, James. Hi. I've, I've been privileged to speak to uh, you, you guys um, uh, in each of the rooms, and I've, I've had a very long time to, to speak to you guys, so thank you very much for that. And, and also, I've, I've also been privileged to speak to people individually. So uh, I, I, I don't know what the answer is to half an hour or, or an hour or, or, or whatever. Half an hour seems a bit short. An hour seems a bit long, maybe. Um, <laughs> so maybe there's something in the middle um, to that. But really, what, I, what I've grabbed the microphone for is, is to, um, to suggest a, a bar camp uh, type, type idea. This would... Uh, People who are saying that um, the comp uh, we need better content or, or more better, con uh, more good content, bring it, bring it yourself. We want to. Uh, I'd love to to hear. I've had some great talks uh, in the in the hallways. It would be good to bring that into into rooms where we can have discussions or, or you present uh, your your stuff that you you want to talk about and only just decide on the day or, or two days before that you actually want to talk about rather than going through this curated uh, and, and very sort of not quite stifling process of, of curation that you understandably have to go through. Yeah. If you just give us a whiteboard or a, a projector and, and, yeah. and see what happens. Yeah, so I'll, I'll let Kiran jump in on this. He's been a part of organizing several of the bar camps in Bangalore. There's some things that I think work well with bar camp internationally. He's got some thoughts and maybe some things that don't necessarily always work at this scale. Uh, Kiran, maybe I'll let you chime in with some so, thoughts there. Um, so, we have had Bar Camp Bangalore for many years now. It's, um, the 12th edition was a couple of months ago. And um, one of the things that's happened with Bar Camp itself, now given that this is the Bar Camp format, you know, that you come in and decide on who's going to speak where on the spot. There is no predefined agenda. And Bar Camp has gone through this process and come to the point where Bar Camp sessions are published online first. You know, that even Barcamp Bangalore says that we just can't handle the chaos of people coming in and saying that they'll speak on the spot. Please propose sessions online, uh, vote for them online. And your scheduling happens only when you turn up. But the fact that you have proposed a topic and you've got people interested is done before you come to the event. Um, and that's unfortunately a function of the size of the event. You know, that as an event gets larger, it becomes really hard to do this kind of thing. Um, and then again, there's also the problem with the venue. You know, so, um, 
this venue, for instance, has got this big hall here, then there's one downstairs, and there are two small halls in the back. Okay? Um, so the fourth hall was going to be filled, but it's been empty because we decided that uh, we shouldn't have that many parallel tracks. And it's good. So there was one hall left that you could say that this could be the open hall that anyone can go in and talk. Um, we have tried this at other events in different venues where we had a little more space. And what we realized is that if it is not on the scheduled paper that you're holding in your hands, nobody goes to that room. Okay. Um, so even when you have done event parties, if you do not put the party on the schedule, people don't turn up for it. Okay. So it's, it's not about whether they're interested or not. It's about the fact that it is not legitimate until it's on the schedule. Um, this is something that I've observed about audiences who come to events in, in Bangalore. And um, uh, that's the unfortunate thing, you know. So the only way to do this is to say, let's see, find a me mechanism by which you can push this onto the website or push this onto some kind of screen that people can keep seeing updated content and say that that is a schedule as its uh, current status is, as it's been updated. Um, and that requires a bit more of technology to make that work, you know, and that's work in progress. Yeah, I, I, I understand. I mean, the, the idea of how you manage the board, that's a, an implementation detail, really. It's, it's the idea of having a smaller... Uh, lower barrier to en entry. I mean, preparing a slide deck is a lot of work. So if, if people come and have a roundtable discussion or a, uh, much less in, in uh, f eyes forward, but uh, chairs in a circle type discussions, uh, smaller rooms. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I understand that in yeah. this particular venue it's going to be difficult with, with uh, a limited number of rooms that, that you have. But I think the, yeah. the meeting rooms downstairs would be quite, quite interesting for that. So to sort of build on your idea, right, I mean, it's, I think, so what Kiran's alluding to is at this scale, ultimately some parts of it have to be organized up front or else people are going to come in and feel like, you know what, that's too chaotic, it wasn't organized, the speaker wasn't good and so on. But maybe what we could potentially do is have one track, bar camp style, it, would that be something people are interested in? One track, bar camp style, people understand what that means? Yep. Yeah. Okay, there's quite a few people interested. So so I think we can explore that. Maybe we can use the second room that's down there. Maybe consider that. Good feedback. Thanks, James. Um, hi. Uh, I have another feedback uh, with respect to people meeting up with each other. So we can have uh, one hour on any one day, a uh, fishbowl kind of a thing in the hall below. Like we had tables. So yeah. you assign three tracks. Maybe one track is whether cross-platform works or not, or the other tracks has design principles or something and people can actually come and discuss their issues and fight and debate and I think that will really get their motors going and just one session, maybe one hour session on any one day, I think it will get people's motors going and you will meet people who are have similar interests to yours and similar experiences to yours and maybe share ideas, learn a little bit. So just one little thing on that, you know, if you put everyone in, in one room and say you go to each corner of the room, acoustics becomes a problem. Um, and this is one of the problems that's happened with bar camp, you know, that we have moved from venue to venue over time, learning that you just cannot have one big open hall with corner groups. You know, you got to have some kind of physical separation to prevent sound from crossing over, otherwise it just gets too noisy. Um, so this, the hall downstairs fortunately is carpeted, so which means that it is not going to have an echo problem if everybody starts speaking up. And so that's something we could try, although it's, it's a bit of a risk, you know, until you try it you don't know if it works or not because you, we've never had that many people try to talk in the room at once. Hey, um, I had some thoughts. So first, uh, I think it's a good thing we've done more app demos this time, and I think it's a really good thing, and we should continue to do more of that. More app demos. Uh, taking off from some of the dis suggestions and discussions about changing the format a little bit, uh, the 30 minute versus one hour. I think 30 minutes is good. Uh, it allows people to introduce a topic, uh, but it's very often it's very difficult to get a technical topic and do a one hour presentation and convey a lot of information and that is just lost, it's a lot of information taken. And I think for those people who want deep dives in a particular area, right, some of these ideas of doing a table discussion, things like that, a speaker can come up, introduce their topic, say it's a 30 minute topic and say, you know what, I'm sitting out here for an mm. hour at a table designated downstairs. If people want to do a further deep dive, come and meet me. Or taking off from the idea of the design discussion, right, say Isaac had done a, dis you know, a half, half an hour session on design principles. If mm. he were to go downstairs and say, you know, people who want the app critiqued, why don't you come down and I'll be sitting here and we can spend an hour or two hours, whatever, discussing and talking about this. So it's sort of a mixed format where speakers who want to volunteer their time in that way can, 
you can go in and as a moderator sit in and help with that discussion. Even if I'm not a speaker and I want to go help out, I might have some experience, I can go and do that. So it's sort of a discussion where there are a few people who are maybe semi-experts who can help, help with that discussion. There are beginners who are coming in. So it helps both in the collaboration, meeting new people. It also mm -hmm. helps, you know, going deeper into a particular topic. Got it. So, and it doesn't have to be like you set up a lot of tables in a room. A couple of tables, each is there for an hour or two designated to a particular speaker mm -hmm. who has introduced this topic earlier and then he goes away to do a deep dive. Yeah. So I think a lot of this is sort of coming around to the sort of two pieces. James's feedback around how can we have less organization around some of the tracks and how can we have a little more organization around the offline conversations? Yep. In some sense, right? <laughs> sort of a combination of both, but it's, it's good feedback. It's good. Yep. Who's got the mic? Hello. Uh, I, have, uh, I attended Hack Night, uh, I think, uh, last week. So Excellent. It was part All of that. All of you are welcome to Hack Night. It's awesome fun. Yeah, Those so who didn't make it this year, please make it next so year. So it was really good. Yeah. So I have one suggestion. Mm -hmm. uh, what I found, like, uh, in Hack Night, uh, whoever came, most of the people were from Bangalore because it's difficult for the people come from outside. Mm -hmm. But in this event, I found many people are from even Delhi, mm -hmm. Hyderabad, Chennai, many places. So as we are uh, two-day event, so will it be possible to have the hack night in today? Because here it will solve the problem of workshop because here can people meet and solve the problem. Mentors will be here to resolve the issues next day. You see the point, I hope mm -hmm. uh, I'm clear on that. Mm. So because we have the venue and we can crack the things because we learned but we have not implemented. So it will be good if we crack, uh, try to do that in the night and if we get stuck and we get the help from the person who presented uh, on, uh, I, I don't know means how feasible and how good the idea is. But so, uh, that can be good for the people from outside also. They can enjoy what we enjoyed in the hack night. It's actually a great idea. Um, I'm just going to throw back one problem point at this. Uh, should the hack night be on the first night or the second night? If it's on the first night, you're not going to be awake the next day when there are talks going on. <laughs> if it's on the second night, remember you're paying rent for the third day now. Okay? And that means everybody's cost goes up. So th that's the trade-off. You know, the, the venue is actually bloody expensive. It's going to cost us about four lakhs per two days. Uh, yeah, and somebody has to sleep, you know, at some point. <laughs> yeah, so... So simple, guys. Party at Kiran's place tonight. You guys are welcome. Hack over. No, no, just kidding. <laughs> so... So I, I don't know if you guys were aware, but a bunch of us were actually sitting and coding all night. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. No, no, a bunch of us sitting and coding at night, you know, like Pratul and I were up till about uh, 2 o'clock or so coding. I think Pratul was up much later. Dude, Pratul, <laughs> how long were you up happened. last night? <laughs> what were you doing watching Cats in the auditorium last night? Uh, I was working on what was supposed to be the DroidCon, official DroidCon application. Which we'll see next year, so. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure, no, no, not next year. We'll see it in the next HasGeek <laughs> event. So, yeah, I mean, uh, that was some of the points that people said that is what we're planning to solve with the application and we hope. Yeah. And yeah, so not that hope was what now. we were doing last night. You know. <laughs> so, um, I, we didn't announce this, but the venue was actually open all night. Uh, I, I think uh, the ses sessions are really great and I think everybody did a really great uh, job at timekeeping especially I, I found that very useful yeah. uh, but one thing I just wanted to mention uh, so you guys are collecting feedback uh, around the whole DroidCon thing uh, I'm pretty sure a lot of speakers will be interested in the feedback on the individual sessions as well mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know uh, do you it plan to share the feedback yes, that you much. that's the whole point of feedback it goes to speakers w will it go back to yes, speakers very much. all right uh, I, yeah, I, I, I just wanted to make sure that that there was a way that it would find it, its way back to speakers. So, so thank you. Absolutely. Oh, hi. So uh, I really love the event, first off. Okay. So uh, you have these NFC cards, right? So I, I was at the uh, at another event. They had like stickers, simple stickers. That, like if you're interested, say AI or ML or you're just a beginner developer. NFC stickers? So uh, yeah, just have those stickers, not NFC stickers, the no. normal stickers, paper oh, okay. stickers. Mm -hmm. Just put them on your thing, mm -hmm. that, uh, just pick them up and put them on your thing. Oh, okay, well, if you see it, well, he's a red sticker guy. I can go talk to him. He's a VC, for example. Mm -hmm. And then the second thing is, uh, if you want to uh, have icebreakers, and you could probably gamify it, 
many ideas here. Gamification is possible, like you already have an NFC card and uh, only a few companies are actually using the, give your contact information to them, right? So you could have something like uh, the number, of the person who has the most contacts exchange, just set up one NF NFC thing at one place and two people have to come there, hit their NFC card and they'll con their contacts will be exchanged. Later on it could be emailed, yes. right? So uh, that way whoever wins could win something at the end. And um, trust me, a lot of people, the sales guys, will just <laughs> make a lot of contact. It okay. be nice. So I'm going to ask Sajid to answer that because he wrote the software. <laughs> right, thanks. Uh, I like the idea. It's, it's actually quite cool. Uh, just that we, uh, the Sorry, last Pink. moment, we also have like a lot of firefighting <laughs> with the NFC stuff because mm, uh, we're still figuring out a lot of issues with the design and architecture of the software that we wrote. Uh, one thing, the entire thing actually depends on the network at the venue and uh, it always uh, fails in the last moment. Well, you guys know that's how the <laughs> conference Wi-Fi works, right? Uh, thankfully, we have figured out how to do it properly, at least like some, let's be still like 70, 80 percent properly uh, in the last couple of events. So we're still sort of getting the NFC workflow properly and, you know, so uh, mm -hmm. it would be great to talk to you about how you would be like thinking about, you know, uh, yeah, that, that's about it. So we actually built the contact exchange part of the software. It's a feature. It's just not out in public because we know it will fail randomly and we don't have enough data yet to make sure it works thoroughly because the network dependency is a serious problem right now. Yeah, so the yeah. other thing is we don't want to like promise features which won't work, work at the venue and, you know, people start complaining. Yeah, and, and if you guys are doing work with NFC and Android, please come forward and talk about it last time. We were hoping for more speakers in NFC this time. I uh, don't think we saw any proposals at all. So if you guys are doing NFC work, please come forward next time. So, so the other thing on the stickers, we actually had them at the Hack Night last week, and uh, we just forgot to print more. So they weren't <laughs> enough to go around for everyone. That was the problem. Okay. Who else? Uh, so just a suggestion. Maybe you should consider freezing the talks a little while in advance before yes. the conference. Uh, the yeah. reverse of last minute planning. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. The, the rest I've given to Arvind anyways. Absolutely. And it's, uh, I don't quite have an answer for that, man. It's, uh, we announced the event uh, a couple of months back and it's almost as, you know, as time tends to zero, the number of submissions tend to infinity. It's almost one of those equations. Uh, we just had a whole burst of submissions in the last two weeks. Uh, we, it's sort of one of the straight offs. Should we say no to all those speakers? They've got good content. One of those tricky ones. What do you think? <laughs> Advanced. So um, it's actually um, I would say I would take responsibility for the fact that it's so been so last minute, uh, and it's it's sort of an outcome of an experiment we've been running for the last few months, which is to see um, how much effort does it take to actually pull off an event at this scale. You know, um, a lot of um, event planning teams tend to do a whole year of planning, and um, that's fairly inefficient. So part of what we've been trying to do is say, can we compress the planning cycle into a really short period and prove it to ourselves by actually running an event every week? Okay? And that's what we have been doing um, since September. Every single weekend since September, we have been doing a different event, okay? uh, different scales. You know, like JSP was two weeks ago. That again had about uh, 320 people, and then there was Hack Night, and then before that there was a JSP Hack Night, and then before that there was an event where we went to UDP. There was one in Pune, there was one in Chennai, there was another one in Bangalore, and so forth. And essentially the, the the test for us was, can we just do one event every week and make it sustainable? And uh, the outcome of the experiment, yes, but then you have no weekends left. Right. <laughs> so that, that was one outcome. The second outcome is, um, if you miss a deadline, you're screwed because this next event is a week away. And that's what happened with DroidCon. DroidCon missed two or three deadlines you know, because it was the last event in the series. Okay? And, um, Usually what happens when it's the last event in the series is like, I'm worried about next week's event. I'm not worried about the next month's event. Okay? And uh, thanks to that, Droidcoin ended up with a planning cycle that was actually only two weeks. So that's uh, a learning. You know, that it's possible to do events at short cycles and, you know, um, get your planning down to something that you can do effortlessly. But it is still not a good idea to do, do an event every week. But definitely agree that next year we should lock all this a lot earlier 
And especially for those who are sort of traveling, who have come in from remote places, it's not easy. You've had to plan travel at the last minute. Not easy, definitely room there for improvement. So. Yeah, what I can tell you is that next year's Droidcon is November 28, 29, and 30th. Three, three days? Yeah. Okay. There you go. I, I actually have a, it's a question for Kiran, I think. Uh, it's about the, the, te the teaser website that was up before the actual website came up for right. Redcon. So it was pre like uh, pretty open-ended, like had no information about the venue and uh, probably because it wasn't finalized, but hmm. the tickets actually went for sale before the teaser, web I mean the actual website came up. So hmm. for a lot of people who were like looking to buy the early, the uh, early bird tickets, so they had no idea about where the event is actually going to happen. So if I'm buying a ticket, I need to do like, is it feasible for me to be there at that time and that date? And so, and there's no that's information that's about... That's a completely valid point. And that's what I meant by missed deadlines. The website was a deadline you missed. Okay. And then you can't do that website because there's another event that you need to pull a website out for. Uh, and that is the lesson that we learned. You know that don't try short planning cycles because these problems come up. You know, that you have to also communicate with a lot of people who need time to make up their own minds about what they're doing at this time of the year, whether they're coming or not, or who else they're coming for, and who else is going to convince them to come and so forth. And that requires so much more planning. Okay? And that's a bad lesson learned. You know, that, that was a mistake. It was badly done. The communications didn't go out on time, and I take responsibility for that. So I guess uh, a small change that could be done for that is considering we already know the dates for DroidCon 2013. Put it on the website right yeah, now. Yeah, I guess you can put them on the website right now. Absolutely. It'll go up today. People know. Yeah, right. Are we through? Sure, please. Yeah, go ahead. Need the mic or? Uh, I just like to end to say I think these guys did a wonderful job, and I think we owe them a really big round of applause. Thank you. Thanks, guys. I, I, I think in just a few minutes, we'll just run through to sort of really name all the people who have been a part of making this happen. Uh, I just had a few quick last things. I've made a note of all these. I want to validate just a few to ensure it's not just opinions of a few smaller groups of people. Um, so the first is around more advanced sessions. So uh, I think could a couple of people here wanted that. So I just want to ask people, how many of you think we need more beginner level sessions? Okay. How many of you think we need more advanced sessions? Got it. Much more. Much larger numbers. So. Now, how many of you think we need more of cross-platform, HTML5, mix of native related talks? Absolutely. Okay, this feels like majority here. So, uh, small niggle there, but does that mean cross-platform, as in integrating Android natively with, say, a JavaScript library and say CouchDB in the background, or does that mean cross-platform, as in Android, iOS, and Windows Phone? It, it could also be cross-platform purely in terms of strategy, and say, how do you make parts of your code reusable, parts of it native, right, or so how do you say screw it? I will just do PhoneGap for everything, or whatever else. Yeah. I guess cross-platform. No, I would prefer the problem in itself, you know, and say what are the different ways in which you can tackle this problem. Absolutely. I mean, irrespective of whether you're a big company today or a small company today, right? One of the sort of challenges you face is time to market and getting either your startup's app out there on all these platforms, without one feature sort of lagging and feeling like it's, like it's a bastardized version, or if you're a big company, right, of really sort of ensuring that you have a good web experience and experiences across all those different platforms. So. It's ultimately these pressures, right, where we could live a year or two back in a world where we didn't need to worry about this a whole lot. Now, ultimately, to really have native apps on each platform is a luxury that some large companies can have. But for a lot of medium-sized companies or companies that are smaller, they're sort of treading this path of what can we do cross-platform. And it doesn't necessarily mean, you know, native shell with just HTML5. It could be a question of some choices, as I think the various speakers have taken us through. Maybe there's some portions which are HTML5, some which are native. I don't think it's something we can escape as we go forward. 
And it's sort of what are the straight offs what are the technology decisions we need to make, what should we really sort of equip ourselves with, right? We don't know what the future holds. Mark Zuckerberg made a very famous quote this year saying that, you know, betting on HTML5 is the biggest mistake that they made as a company, right? So who's going to question him, right? <laughs> so, um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's hard, right? We don't know what's coming up. Things shift fairly quickly in the space that we live in. So I think it's sort of the platform to discuss it, see what's happening, and see how we can figure out what we can adapt to suit our needs. And whether it's across platforms, meaning iOS, Windows, Android, I think we've had requests for that too, to consider sort of a broader conference across these. Is that something potentially that interests some people? I don't know, how many people here are both iOS and Android or other uh, platform developers? Okay, that's like 40%, I guess, roughly, so, sure. Um, okay, um, so I'm just gonna... Hey, just uh, yeah, one question, Kiran, actually, this was a question for you. I don't know if it's feasible, but uh, I think I speak for everyone when I say this, even though the event is basically now over, is there something that you could create on, on the HasGeek side where people can come and just say, hey, I was there at DroidCon, and if people still want to connect and know who they are, I think even though we're all on our way out, I'd still love to sort of have conversations with 80 or 90 percent of the people who I've not yet met. So. Absolutely. Okay. So I've been trying to code this for a while, but with one event in a week, there's no time to do this. You know, but now that this is the last event, I have three and a half months to the next event, that's the time to code and build these features. If and I was a coder, I would have volunteered, but sorry. So, so, I mean, there's one thing we could do even now. So people were asking me earlier today, why isn't DroidCon trending? So the one way we can make it trending, all of us right now, if you just want to say hi to people on Twitter, tell people what you do, if you want to connect with other people and meet people offline in the hallway here. Hashdroidcon. Hash Go for it and say hi to folks now with the Hashdroidcon hashtag and tell them you're going to meet them offline at 6.30 in, in the hallway. So. Hi, before you move on, quick uh, suggestion that Lanyard might help there. Uh, hey, James. Yep. Uh, there's a, there's a London-based startup uh, called Lanyard, which uh, is really about conferences, uh, yeah. and it's Twitter-backed, uh, so that it, it's backed by Twitter data rather mm -hmm. than money. Um, so you guys saying, uh, let's all go to the Lanyard and register there, or, or register our details or whatever, to say that we are, we went to DroidCon India, then that, I think that would be, uh, mm -hmm. that would be a useful steer to start with without touching any code. Yep, actually, Lanyard's a great resource. So, um, who's never heard of Lanyard.com? Okay, check it out. LA, never heard of it. You have no idea what Lanyard.com is. Okay, so for, for you guys, go to Lanyard.com. L-A-N-Y-R-D.com. If you have internet, you can open that. Um, Lanyard.com is an event planning wiki. It's where we list all our events. So if you want to see the calendar of Hasgeek events all the way through 2013, it's already on the website. Just go have a look. And, um, well, yeah, see, this, this sort of thing happens all the time. You, know? um, you can go there and go to the DroidCon event page on Lanyard and say that you were there. You know? And that's a clear way to find people because it uses your Twitter ID. So your ID on Lanyard is your ID on Twitter. It's very easy to then go discover someone and go start a conversation with them on Twitter. So that's, that's a great site and people should use it. Um, so, are we done with feedback? Anyone else got a point to make? Uh, How many sorry? people? Well, that's a good question. So how many of you here are actually programmers? Most of the audience. Okay, so not a programmer. Okay, that's a fairly small number. Kiran raised his hand, notice. Okay. Sorry? <laughs> no, I mean, I'm just leading by example. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, just a few last things. Um, this is one of the things that we sort of have some trade offs of, which is um, getting big name speakers. This is trying to facilitate more interactions between all of you. Because to get big name speakers means sort of, sort of bigger budgets, investing more money in it, right? Planning a lot of their travel and things up front. What's your feel with sort of the mix, with sort of speakers we have? Should we be reaching out to more big name speakers, people who are sort of known more in the Android world? Is there something you'd like to see more of? Hi. 
Yeah, uh, so about the speakers, I was just wondering why don't you guys, uh, like is there any reason you don't support like uh, speaker prizes? Because that would attract a lot of people. What's the speaker like, prize? Speaker, like who have, we can vote for the best speaker here. So it's I never thought about uh, that. I mean That's a great idea actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, basic, like a simple vote, even if it, uh, not to like promote them, no prizes or anything, just like appreciation that you did a fabulous job. So we actually tell the speaker that, because we look at the feedback and uh, the best guy, we make sure we inform them that they were really good. Mm -hmm. I mean, it would be nice if he knew it right in front of us, you uh, know? It's paper feedback, man. And somebody has to do <laughs> it on it. That's, that's, that's um, the yeah. app, that's what the man's been coding all night. <laughs> it's not done. You know, unfortunately, it's, it takes a lot of time to build such features. Yeah. We have, in fact, had two people, two different teams trying to code an app for the event. Neither of them is usable at this point, you know, it's for different reasons. Yeah. Yeah, recognizing speakers is a great idea. It's a good way of recognizing all the efforts that some of them have put in. I think it's always sort of a challenge putting the people on sort of that stick, right? How do you gauge it and collating feedback? Some of it is a bit subjective, uh, but I agree. I think we need to do something there with good feedback. Yeah. Uh, I think, the, I don't know, there's this two students Two lady students who came in from Goa to attend DroidCon, and they're still here. Uh, they came over, and this, this is the first time they're at DroidCon. They enjoyed it. And one thing they both asked me is, why don't we have more women speakers? And uh, I was like, I completely agree. I wish more of the women in the community were sort of coming forward. So I've reached out to a few. Bavia, so yeah, we're turning to you next year. So we're definitely looking for more, more of the women in the community to come forward. Uh, we definitely want to make it a platform where everyone can come forward and be a part of this, share your knowledge, share your learnings, and feel welcome. So. Cool. So that's it for me. Guys, thank you so much for the feedback. I'll be honest that I'm not sure all of it is going to happen next year, uh, but we'll take all the feedback to heart. We'll run through it. We might follow up offline with some of you. We welcome more specifics, and we'll try to figure out from there what we can take into account. We've got three days next year to play with, which is great news, Kiran. So a lot more time, a uh, lot more sessions. I think it should be a lot more fun. So thank you all. Okay. So I have a bunch of people to thank for helping make this event possible. And at the end of it, um, I remember there was a contest going on and somebody's won it. You know, we'll find out who at the end. Um, first, I'd like to thank the sponsors. You know, If it wasn't for sponsor support, we wouldn't actually be doing this event because it takes a lot of effort and a lot of resources to put together an event. So I want to thank the people who have sponsored us. Um, Intel, who's been our gold sponsor, who's got prizes to announce. Uh, hold on, guys. I'm going to call you out for that later. Um, Intuit, Yandex, these guys came all the way from Russia. You know, it's a, it's a long trip to make just to spend two days talking to developers here. And I think uh, they deserve recognition for that. You know, they've they sort of spent a lot of time in the audience talking to people. <laughs> And um, if you have been thinking of app stores, try them out. You know, um, I went to the talk yesterday. I don't know if many of you were there because I counted only about 25 people in the room. But I actually learned things about app stores that I did not know before. And I thought I knew everything about app stores. So that was a great talk yesterday. Um, Intuit, I just mentioned. Uh, little i and uh, the sponsors for the Hack Night, Mobstack and Lookup. Um, they haven't been part of the main event. They came to the Hack Night instead because they figured it was better to go to a focused audience over there. I think that was great. And uh, I'm going to call out the team and all of the people who helped make this possible. Okay? Uh, I'm not going by alphabetic order. It's just random order. Um, Chris. So not everyone is in the room right now. I'm just going to call out uh, Whoever is here, please come up if you're in the room and standing here right now. Ashwan, Radha, Sajjad, Kingsley, Francesca, Harris, Zainab, Prasita, Hasib, Pradeep, Sandeep, Anant, Anupam, Akshay, Nana Prakash, Vishal, Anirudh, Sandeep, Anand, Chitipotu, Vamsi, Anu, Siddharth, Ashwin, Vipul, Pratul, Naufal, and Arvind, and of course, Kausab, the man who's been here all day. Thank you.
Okay, somebody has got to take video. So this Anu who is refusing to let go of the duty of the camera. Uh, on the back side, there's a power button, you have to press it twice. So thank you guys. Um, as you can see, it takes a lot of people to pull together an event and everyone's got critical duties because even if one person is not doing their job, something or other starts going wrong. So. <laughs> Who's got the mic? She's been running the event for the last several weeks. I know, it's just been two weeks. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I mean, thanks to all of you. Uh, uh, the program committee, uh, Arvind, Kingsley, um, Soham, Amrit, I don't know if they are here. Um, just come on stage. Yeah, the Bangalore Android user group. You know, you guys. No, no, the like DroidCon program committee. <laughs> <laughs> Ravi, you should be up here too for the app. Ravi Vyas burnt midnight oil and developed app ka app. <laughs> so the app was, we had a problem. Use the mic. So next year you'll have, a you'll have an app for sure. The app is ready already. What we would need help is, uh, it's already on GitHub. Uh, help us kind of put in more features and probably clean up the code. I gave you all that paneer that night. You still didn't make the app, huh? <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah, thanks. Uh, I think Ravi, Amrit and Soham was just absolutely fantastic at the DroidCon hack night. Uh, uh, and as you could have seen, we had three great app demos and uh, um, six other apps. Uh, you can see the videos on YouTube. So thanks, guys. Uh, I don't think we could have run the hack without the three of you and all the chattering and pattering. <laughs> so thank you so much. Um, uh, I guess, yeah, I mean the volunteer team. Uh, I have a special thanks for Francesca who came in right towards the end, uh, who helped really manage uh, all the people here. And uh, uh, where's Naufal? Uh, Naufal, who was, uh, who's been here uh, in, since the past two months, uh, coordinating the volunteers and, and getting uh, people around. And thanks to all of you and to people downstairs who haven't shown up here. Uh, it's, it seems like it's mundane to man a camera or to you know, pass a mic around or to um, keep time for speakers. But these are the things that actually make a conference so smooth because you want the sessions to run on time. You want the speaker's experience to be as good as the participant's experience. And as much as these things seem mundane, they cannot run without, without these things. So uh, thank you, guys. Some of you have been around with us through the course of this year. For some of you, this is your first event. I hope we'll see a lot more of you next year um, supporting us at the, at the event. And uh, yeah, I think that's all. Thanks, thanks so much. Um, I forgot to mention one of the sponsors, MTS. I'm sorry, guys. So, thank you too. And uh, finally, um, I think you guys can all get back and have a nice seat. Um, the final bit, Intel's contest. There are two contests going on here. Um, I know the details of one. I'm not sure the details of the other. So I'd like the Intel guys to come up and um, talk about it and give away your prize. So. One of them is a QR code contest, the other one was a photo contest. Mike. Uh, thanks, Kiran. Thanks, uh, It was a great event. My first DroidCon. Uh, so thanks, thanks for awesome response and uh, so, I have one of the contest winners name with me and rest of the contest winners I'm going to get from Zainab. Yeah. So before I uh, announce the winners, I would like to thank Intel team. Amit, uh, who is a technical marketing manager, I would like him to uh, please come on the stage. Nitish, uh, you know, who's been doing some fantastic work on Android and uh, on x86 platform. Uh, Nitish, please come on the stage.
So first I'm going to announce the name of uh, a number of uh, people who have won Android Development Board. So the first person, Amit, please come over. Nitish. Uh, the, the winner for the first contest, uh, I'll just uh, name the numbers, right? Numbers, the yeah, yeah. 4709. Do we have uh, you know, somebody with a with tag on their... Uh <laughs> 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 yeah, <laughs> you registered with that number, right? <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't have the names, I just have the numbers. Four seven zero nine? Four seven zero nine. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, the next one is seven five two three. Seems like we are playing housey. Yeah. <laughs> if you're not in the room, you're not getting a prize. This is why you have to stay. <laughs> okay, the next number is 1613. Okay, nobody in the house? Somebody else lost a prize. Oh, 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 there's one more there. Okay, excellent. And the uh, last in this category, 9504. One more. Oh. So we have one person who is not here. So we have a few uh, backup numbers. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. So the backup number is 1161. Yay! So thank you guys, thank you for uh, you know taking the contest. Is the fourth one? Uh, we would need the numbers as well. Four seven zero nine. Uh, nine five. I'll I'll take it. Yeah. So what's your name? Rajiv Mishra. So thank you, Rajiv. Thank you for participating in the contest. The second is seven five. Three. Okay. 1613. Okay. Thank you. And what's your name? Sushil. Sushil. Thanks, Sushil. The third is 9504. What's your name? Guru Teja. Guru Teja. Thanks. Uh, I'll have this. Yeah. And 1161. Good. What's your name? Vivek. So thanks, guys. Thanks for participating in the contest. Uh, we had uh, two more contests. So one of the contests was to take a picture with the uh, Android cutout. Okay. And uh, the winner... Okay. Uh, so Francisca and I were entitled to look through the Twitter stream and figure out who who took the best picture with the Intel Droid? Uh, yeah, it's already there. Hey, Kastu, can you switch to the next tab? Yes. Uh, so, so there were about 20, 20, 25 ish entries, and this is the picture that we thought would, is like interesting. And there's a Droid. It looks like the Droid's holding the camera and taking it up, taking a picture. So, and that's Whipple. Uh, we've both been running around and taking pictures as well. So, uh, and the picture was taken by Kingsley. That's what I knew. So, Whipple's the winner. So, Nitish, would you do the honor? And there was one more contest called App Pitching Contest. And <laughs> uh, 
Okay, so the uh, winner of the AppJam contest is uh, Karan Rao, and his suggestion was for an app for uh, people with uh, with uh, disabilities, and that kind of uh, uh, was unanimously voted by me and uh, uh, Shrikant. And uh, I think uh, if you actually get to work on the app, it would be a great thing for all of you. Works. Okay. Do we have any more announcements that I forgot? I guess that's it then. Thanks guys. Thanks everyone for coming. This has been great. We'll, I hope we'll see you again next year. Um, one last request. Please drop off your NFC cards when you go out. It will save us some money because it's, it's not cheap trying to buy new cards every month. Okay. So please, if you don't need your card, return it. <laughs>